Come on, is it really unsafe to charge your phone at the airport or at one of those public charging stations? Well, these guys seem to think so. Apparently, you should not use a public charging station because those shared chargers could be spreading malware and monitoring software to your device. It's a wild one. This is a new warning now about juice jacking. So crooks are actually using it to target your phones. The FBI says beware. You have to admit, it's a sexy headline. FBI warns against using public charging stations. But is this a real threat or is this just clickbait? Well, firstly, juice jacking isn't new. At a hacker convention called DEF CON, the Wall of Sheep set up a free charging station. And when anybody plugged in their phone, this message appeared. This was back in 2011, so hardly a new hacker phenomenon. And today, the cell phone world is a vastly different place than it was back then. When you plug your USB cable into your phone, the phone doesn't just allow the data to flow. If it's an Android phone, it defaults to charging, so no data travels up and down the cable. If it's an iPhone, it asks if you trust this device. Only if you tap on yes, does the data flow. If you tap on no, it only charges your iPhone. Now, to be clear, we're talking about the actual USB port in the wall or built into the furniture at your hotel or at those charging stations you see at public places like airports and train stations. We are not talking about the cable itself. We're gonna get onto that shortly. Back to juice jacking. You may recall that the FBI wanted to get into the San Bernardino shooter's iPhone after that terrorist attack. And initially they couldn't because they didn't want the data to be deleted after X number of tries where the iPhone wipes the phone. Now eventually they did manage to get into the phone by using an Australian company called Azimuth Security. I'm butchering these names. Whilst we don't know how long it took, we know that the security company discovered that if they chained together a whole bunch of exploits using the lightning port on the phone, they could guess every combination of the pin to eventually unlock the phone. This was possible until Apple updated the software and that exploit was closed and the FBI paid $900 thousand dollars for the service. Now if juice jacking technology worked like it was reported, wouldn't they have saved nine hundred thousand dollars and use that method to get the data out of the phone? Hmm. So yes, there are indeed firms that sell software that can hack phones for large sums of money by writing very specific code to get around vulnerability found on a very specific target device. At an airport or a hotel, a hacker would need to do the same, then wait for the right type of phone to be attached to that charging station for long enough for the juice jacking to actually work to add malware to that phone. And the odds of that happening are pretty slim. For the effort, this is very low return. Phone manufacturers have built in so many safety measures in place to detect malware landing up on the phone and especially something coming via the USB or lightning port since this is how we transfer data between our phones and our computers, like our photos and videos, and even though today everything is done via the cloud. Now, if a hacker was paid to specifically hack an individual and spearfish that person, then they could in theory devise a series of attack They would eventually land up getting that person's data. But there are so many ways to get that info, the juice jacking is pretty low on the tool sets. But as a general bunch of hackers getting together and saying, hey guys, let's stick a dodgy USB charger and hope someone of value plugs the right phone in for long enough to maybe extract some useful data. Yeah, I, I don't see that happening. And in fact, even though this may technically be possible, as of April 2023, there are no documented cases of juice jacking ever taking place in the wild. In fact, I found an article on Slate.com that quotes an FBI spokesperson who said that the reason the FBI social media person shared it, it's because the agency regularly provides reminders and public service announcement in conjunction with our partners, referring to the fact that the FCC issued a juice jacking warning. So reporters, thanks for the heads up. But clickbait. Okay, wait a minute. What about that cable? Okay, now that is a different story. And here we actually have a story. You can buy something called an OMG cable from a company called Hack5. These are cables that sell for less than $200 and look identical to the regular USB or lightning cables that you would use to charge your phone. But there is one massive difference. Built into the cable is a tiny controller that allows the hacker to remotely run attacks against that phone. 
It can capture keystrokes that will be sent to the hacker. It can inject keys with a script. It can wait for commands from the hacker via the internet and, 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 and. Is it safe to charge your phone at one of these charging kiosks? As long as you don't use their cables, then probably yes. Just make sure if you're on an Android that it says charging only. And if you see that message pop up on your screen saying trust this device, if you're on an iPhone, unplug immediately. But I know as a viewer of this channel, you wanna be extra safe, which makes me pretty proud. So what you can do is do the following. If you're using a public charging station, number one, bring a power only cable that has no data capabilities at all and only can charge your phone or use a data condom, which is a device that sticks to the tip of the cable and only allows power to flow through as the data pins are missing. So no little data swimmers. Or just use your own charger that plugs into the outlet as you do at home. Now that I mention it, please buy a brand name charging brick and don't use one of those cheap no name ones that you get from the local gas station or your local Sunday market. You want good components inside your charging device so they don't fry your phone or burn down your has. There's a link up here if you want to see more information about scary and dodgy chargers. And really, when it comes to leaving data behind, you leave so much data in a car. Check out this video right over here next, or check this video that YouTube thinks you should watch. Hit the head down here to subscribe, and let's get to that 1 million sub mark. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I'll see you in this video, or this video, or I'll see you in both. Let's go.